Extension Peanut Specialist. Uh, Mumford is expected to be moving in in early August to be the new peanut specialist for the state of Georgia. I'm Tyron Spearman for Southeast Agnet. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! All right, four minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this morning. Robin, I have, it's not really an invention, but I have an idea for, and I don't want to get paid for it. I just have an idea I want to spread out there. I want to enlighten the world on something I discovered. Okay. Are you ready for this? Yep. Okay, so if you have some, some, a box of Legos, right? And, and, uh-huh. and the like, and the kids do what kids normally do with Legos. You know how they, they take, whatever they made apart and they put it back in the box right oh yeah i mean everybody doesn't make these gigantic dinosaurs that's that <laughs> go in some museum most, most kids awesome. they play with the legos and then they take them apart and they put them back uh-huh. right so the box says what a thousand legos let's just say uh-huh. okay and let's say you're careful and you count and you count 999 oh man there's one missing lego mm-hmm. somewhere there's a lego missing you go you look everywhere, under the couch, under the refrigerator, up in the attic. You look everywhere. Yes. I don't know where the other Lego went, right? <laughs> I have a technique for finding the missing Lego. Okay. Very simple. Wait till the, it's nighttime. Turn out the lights. Walk through the room barefoot. You will step on it. <laughs> you yeah. will step on the missing <laughs> Lego. It works every time. Now. <laughs> We have somebody on the phone who might actually not only be able to pass this information on to the powers that be at the Lego company, but to the president of the United States. That's right. I believe so. Uh, Star Electronica is on the phone. She's the president of the Association for Library Service to Children, the Youth Services Outreach Manager for the four-county library system in New York State. Uh, she served as the chair of the John Newberry Award Committee. Wow, her, her credentials go on and on. A judge for the New York Times Best Illustrated Books for Children uh, and a panelist for the National Book Award in the Young People's Literature category. Wow. Wow. Um, the first White House Maker Fair is happening. We have a, a, um, a mayor from Palm Bay yep. that actually attended that. I think their event was Wednesday. Yeah, he uh, was chosen. And in Great addition, job. what is his name again? I can't remember his name. Uh, forget. Oh, Mayor Capote. Yes. Mayor William Capote. Uh, so he was up there with the president, and uh, Star Electronica is on the phone right now to tell us, I think, about that, as well as about the 2014 Lego Foundation Idea Conference. So we're going to find out a lot of stuff in a small period of time. Star Electronica. Good morning, Star. Good morning, Larry. And you are right. That is a foolproof method of finding a uh, missing Lego. <laughs> that does work. That, I, I'm telling you, you could look all day long. You're never going to find it. You, you don't find it until it's nighttime and you have your shoes off, right? <laughs> <laughs> so where are you right now? Well, I'm in New York City right now, but I was in Washington on Wednesday for the Maker Fair, and it was amazing. And what was the Maker Fair? I was, uh, the, the news came across the, the news service here. I guess it was the Florida News Network, mm-hmm. and I didn't quite understand what was happening. Well, it was this incredible showcase of a wonderful array of things that people had made, that they had taken that creative process of thinking up a great idea, and then they actually brought it to fruition with their own two hands. And it was really, really incredible. It was so inspiring to see those innovators out there thinking, uh, seeing a need, and then finding a way to make something that would fill that need. Oh, wow. And where was this? In the White House? It was. Did you, it get, was. Them, did you get to meet the president? I did not get to meet the president. Oh, man. How disappointing is that? Yeah. I got to go through the White House, which was very, very cool, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what kind of things did uh, people create? Oh, my gosh. Well, I I was particularly impressed with what young people are creating. Like, there was this young man. Oh, he was so wonderful. He has developed a vehicle um, that's powered by feet. And it can be a mobility device for people with disabilities or for senior citizens that are having mobility issues. It's sort of inspired by a Segway, but it's steered with the feet and powered by the feet. And it goes up to 15 miles an hour, which is pretty wow. fast. Pretty fast. Wow. wow. <laughs> Here is the amazing thing, though. He did this as a sophomore in high school. Oh, oh, wow. Fabulous. Was there a story behind it? Did he know somebody that needed it? 
I, I don't believe there was that story behind it. I think he was just a tinkerer, and, and so many of these kids are. You know, they start with Lego bricks and building things that way, and they learn to tinker, and then they just keep that creative oh, process. Okay, so the, so the prototype of an idea is often fleshed out with a Lego kit. Uh, oftentimes, yes. In, in fact, I've, I've heard architects talk about um, different models that they have built that they've actually started with a, a Lego kit uh, and, um, you know, just sort of mapped out things that way. So, yeah, it, there are many applications. You know, we, we think of child play as child play, but really play is the workshop for kids. And so they're developing all these skills that will lead them down the road to be in innovators and inventors of the future. Oh, wow. Were, were any of the things that were presented simply artistic, or did everything have a practical function? Um, well, I, that is a really good question. You're the only person that's asked me that. <laughs> the only artistic things I can think of at the moment was there was a pancake maker that you could program to make pancakes that would look like um, whatever, the Eiffel Tower. It was one that really? looked like... Yeah, there was one that looked like the president. So, you know, if you wanted to have Elvis's face on your pancake, you could do that. You could sell that on eBay. You just pretend it wow. was an accident. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, <laughs> <laughs> but most of the things had really some sort of practical application. Like there was one young woman who has developed a, an insert to go into sneakers so that as you walk or hike, you're generating and storing enough energy to keep your cell phone charged. Oh, wow. That is pretty awesome. Yeah. That would get us walking more, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. You, know, you got to walk the talk. So um, did, did, were you there as a journalist or did you have something yourself? Oh, I was there as an appreciator uh, because I'm a librarian, and libraries have long had, uh, we have a long history of providing experiences and opportunities and programs for kids to have those kinds of hands-on experiences so that they can develop those skills, um, those tinkering, um, experimental, uh, manipulative skills that lead into actually creating things. Yeah. So, you you know, I'm amazed. I, I'm amazed at what's in the library nowadays, especially for kids. I mean, when I was a kid, there were books and maybe records. I mean, there's so much more now with computers and uh, and and even even ebooks that you can download onto your your little device. It, oh, isn't it amazing? It we are so lucky. We are so lucky to have um, such wonderful resources, and that they're gathered within libraries um, for everybody to use, for all members of the community to use. And that's the same goes with programming activities, um, that we have those activities for parents to bring their kids into the library and really bond together during these kinds of experiences. And children are so creative, and they just love to have hands-on on everything. And it's just amazing to me, all the free programs out there that the libraries, especially the libraries, libraries in our area uh, provide to, to the children and their parents. They make it a really fun learning opportunity plus a family time. It's so true. And uh, like I said, we are really lucky. And one of the things we're lucky about is that the Association for Library Service to Children has teamed up with LEGO to develop um, resources for all libraries. All libraries across the country can download digital resources that have all the infor information and the inspiration to create Lego clubs and these building experiences for kids in every community. My, my son is uh, uh, 37 and he's been playing with Legos ever, <laughs> ever since he was born and he just got a, uh, a Yoda Lego for Christmas and he Got it all built, and it's in his living room right now. <laughs> so that's that, that's pretty cool for all ages. It's so creative. It really is. It's something that you carry with you for the rest of your life. So isn't that wonderful that Lego now has given us these resources, and we're starting with children as young as four, um, building, having these building experiences. Because like you said, Robin, it, they'll, they'll do this forever. Mm -hmm. So what is, what is the 2014 Lego Foundation Idea Conference? Is that something that's passed or something coming up? Honestly, I don't have any information about that. Um, I, I'm here to talk about the library, but oh, okay. I, <laughs> I am curious, and I'm going to follow up on it. And you know where I'm going to go to find out about it? The library. The library, yeah. <laughs> yeah the, the library was there before Google, right? 
Right. You know, in, in radio, it, it was something constantly. We would be asked questions, and way before Google or the Internet in general, I mean, that was my resource. I would call the library constantly and ask, could you look something up for me? Could you look something up for me? All the time. So I don't do that anymore because we do have the Internet, but it was my resource. I know. It, it really is, and that's, it, that's music to my ears. And, and librarians are still there um, to to make those connections between resources and people. That's what we're still doing. Well, the uh, uh, world itself is very multicultural, and each community has different people from different cultures within the same community, and the library really gives them an opportunity for all of these cultures to meld together, and people would seem to become more friendly when they know exactly what the other culture is about. That's so true, and I'm so glad you brought that up, Robin, because there is a new um, research project that actually LEGO did called the... Col uh, creativity across cultures, I believe. Um, and anyway, it talks about that creativity occurs, that's a common human trait. It occurs across every single culture. And that need to play and the, the satisfaction that one gets from creating something out of one's imagination. So that's something that we all have in common and can celebrate together at the library. Uh, I, I know that we are, I think we went over time already, Star, but could, before we run out of, well, we've already run out, but I mean, before <laughs> we say goodbye, for the listeners who want to know more, and I'm, I guess I need to know a website or any way to get information, especially if there's something that we can participate in. Absolutely, and what I'll say is go to your local library because they have tons of programs for kids at every library during the summer because we want to keep those kids learning during the summer so they can go back to school ready to learn. And so the best place to get the information is actually in your own neighborhood at your library. Well, that is the message we embrace. We, Robin and I just participated in a library event about a week or so ago. Yep. There was an ice cream, a guy who had, like, the, he knew ice cream trivia that you wouldn't know somebody would be so interested in ice cream. Yeah. He was amazing what he taught the children, and they invited us because we play music, so we kind of did a little music before, the sh before his presentation, mm -hmm. and uh, so it was, it was a wonderful thing to be part of. And, and it is all because of the librarians that we know. This, yes. this happens to be a male librarian. When I was a kid, all, I always envisioned that all librarians were women. Yes. <laughs> but that's, we're just we're like everybody else. <laughs> yeah. Well, Star, you're a delight to talk to, and and, and you're in New York City. i you know I've never been in the New York City Library, but I know where it is. It's huge. It is. It has those two big lions out in front. Yes. And mm -hmm. Their names. I, wait a minute. I know their names. <laughs> wait a minute. Oh, gee, I know their names. I used to eat. <laughs> I used to eat there. I used to sit on the steps. Uh huh. All right? Yes, yes. Okay, yes. I, I, I give up. I can't remember their names, Star. What are they? Patience and Fortitude. That's right, that's right. Jesus. Wow. Jesus. <laughs> that's it's, what you it's have. It's been yeah. a long time. <laughs> Patience and Fortitude. Which yeah. is which, do you know? Pardon? Do we know which line is Patience and which one is Fortitude? Yeah, as you face them, the one to your left is Patience, the other is <laughs> That's my guess. <laughs> oh, that's your guess. <laughs> yeah, because Patience and Fortitude go together in that order. Yeah, exactly. It's like lewd and lascivious. You never say it the other way around. <laughs> and you always read left to right, so it makes sense. Patience. Unless you're Jewish, then uh, it, it could oh, be. Oh, yeah, that's right. Then patience could be on the, well, what's the, well, never mind. Uh, Star, you are fun. Thank you for being on the air with us. And uh, so where's home for you? Binghamton, New York. Oh, Binghamton. Oh. Yeah, it's about three and a half hours from here. And what's the college in Binghamton? There's a school up there. There is. It's um, Binghamton University. I played there when I was much younger. I played guitar. Uh -huh. I used to do concerts. I was not famous, but they would invite me, and I'd play. Oh, my gosh. It's been a long time. Uh, well, thank you for being on the air with us today, and uh, you are welcome back anytime. That was fun. Well, thank you. I had nothing but fun with you guys. Thank you so much. All right. We'll take a little break. We'll be right back.
You think that sounds hot? The deals are even hotter at Palm Chevrolet of Ocala. During our sizzling summer sales event, you'll get model year in pricing on every new Chevrolet in our huge inventory. Get up to $10,000 off any Chevy Silverado pickup in stock. We'll even take your current trade, even if you owe thousands more than it's worth, regardless of make, miles, or condition. 2014 Chevy Cruze, just $149 per month. 2014 Chevy Malibu, just $189 per month. Plus, GM certified pre-owned vehicles, up to 50% off compared to new. And get two-year, 24000 mile no-cost scheduled maintenance. Palm Chevrolet of Ocala has multiple banks and credit unions with the lowest rates for all types of credit, even if your credit is less than perfect. When other dealers say no, Palm Chevrolet of Ocala says yes. Palm Chevrolet of Ocala, where everyone spends less and gets more. 2300 Southwest College Road, exit 350, just east of I-75 in beautiful Ocala. 36-month lease, 2892 at signing, plus tax title license with approved credit, zero security deposit, trade balance carried to new loan, offers not in combination, find new roads. PalmChevrolet.com You've got a garden and we've got a show for you called You've Got a Garden with your host, Master Gardener, Carol Ann Baldwin. 